In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a header element that starts out transparent when you're at the default load of the page, when you're at the start of the page here. And then as you scroll down, the background style changes and it's a nice ease in uh, transition to that background change. You can see that right here I have transparent and it's going to this subtle white background color. It's only a couple of steps and uh, we'll be using uh, the transitional tab of your property editor here, which doesn't get used very much, but this is a great use case for it. So here's how this works. So in order to change this group element to a floating group element, I can do this pretty quickly by right clicking on the group right there and then selecting this option here, replace by another element. This will let me change the type of group container it is. So I'm, we're going from group to floating group. I'll click on that, replace. And you can see that the background styling of the group actually went away. I no longer have a white background. We can give it a background style if we want, but we're gonna pause there for a second. For the floating groups, there are a couple of um, properties that are specific to it. So we have to tell Bubble where we want the group to float relative to. In our case, since this is a header element, we want it to float relative to the top of the page. So we'll leave it on the default setting here, but you can see that you have other settings as well. Also, remember to, to keep the actual group itself um, at the very top boundary of the page as well, so that it can stay stuck there and you don't have anything kind of, you don't have any weird gaps above it. Okay, now floating Z index, this is just kind of where in the layers of elements on the page um, you want the floating group to exist. Do you want it to sit on top of everything else? Um, so for example, I have this image element here. Do I want it on top of that image or do I want it to float beneath all of those things? While this is a header um, group, this is very important. I want it to be visible at all times, so I'm going to keep it floating above everything. So as I scroll, you can see that the text and the buttons, basically that group is following me up and down the page as I scroll. So that's what the floating group does. But as we scroll down, we want to turn on this background um, for the headers so that it can stand out a little bit more and it doesn't clash with stuff that's on the page. Because you can see once I'm down here on this part of this mountain image, the text gets completely lost um, within the image. and of course, if you have other things going on in your page, you don't want things to run into each other. You want to give this a lot more um, separation. So the property we want to adjust to make that happen is going to be the background style. So we're going to add a condition. And only when we're at a certain position down the page do we want the background style to change. So let's say when the current uh, page scrolling position is let's do 200 uh, pixels. This is this number that you type in here is the um, y position of on the, of where you are on the page. So, for example, the height of this um, floating group is 81 pixels tall. So if I scroll down um, 81 pixels, my current scrolling position will be 81. Um, now, I don't want it to change as soon as I scroll just that little bit. I want to give it a little bit more time. Um, so I'm just going to, we're going to kind of eyeball it here and do 200 pixels and we'll see how that looks. So what happens when we're at 200, or actually what I'm going to do is anytime we're greater than 200 because we don't want it to be just at that 200 mark. Um, it might be a very tiny target that you're going to expect your users to hit. So anything greater than 200. So background style, we'll change it to flat color. And then the color itself, we're going to change the color to white um, for this floating group. And I might actually take down the transparency there. So it's not completely opaque. There's going to be a little bit of transparency there uh, just so that we can see through it just a little bit. All right, so let's preview this page now and see how this looks. Okay, so we're at scrolling position zero because I haven't scrolled down a little bit. But if I scroll a little bit more, we can see around there is when the white kicks in because we're at um, at least 200, I guess it's 201 since I said greater than 200 um, pixels in our Y position. So 
um, as I scroll down, it keeps that uh, white background. Now to make this a little bit more seamless, we want to fade into that color change. Right now it's just very, it just turns on. We want to make it a little bit more subtle, so we want it to transition into that color. And we can control that with the Transitions tab over here. So the property that we're going to work with is the background style. And basically we're telling Bubble when we're changing the background style, uh, how long do we want to take to make that change? So this is just going to be like a little fade. By default, the transition duration is 0.2 seconds. This is 200 milliseconds. Let's make it a little bit more obvious and do uh, maybe a second and a half. So I'll do 1500 milliseconds there. And uh, it's going to be an ease transition. If you actually drop down um, this list here, you have a couple different options for the behavior of the transition. Definitely click around and see how those change, um, what the transition will look like. But we're gonna leave it on this default to ease in and out of background style changes for one and a half seconds. So I'll refresh the page and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm scrolling down. So if you saw there, it's a nice gradual change. You can see it a little bit better on the way up because the um, we're landing on the empty space here on the image. It's easier to see. And that was the last step to it. Obviously, you have a lot of different options available to you to really customize um, this transition for your app specifically. Remember, you have the transition duration, you have um, the style of transition there, and the position on the page for when this transition should take place, and of course, what that change um, actually is in terms of the style property. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on new tutorials being posted. Thanks so much for watching.